Hey everyone, I just finished two pair of jeans, so I figured I should do a video and share with you my top tips for jeans making. Because let's be honest, sometimes making jeans, well, it's not all that easy, especially all the little detail that goes on, not to mention all the top stitching. So, since I've done, I think, over 10 pair of jeans by now, well, I learned a lot of tips and tricks along the way that I'm dying to share with you, so that's what we're going to talk about today. And one of the struggles that I think a lot of us have is to make the inside, the inner waistband looks as nice and neat as the outside. And I have tried a lot of different techniques for that and I'm going to describe to you today my favourite two-step method of achieving a nice even looking waistband on the inside. And the first thing I do is that I stitch the inner waistband with a stitch about one centimeter from the edge that I use as a guide to fold in. That makes sure that the fold is even and then the magic happens. That is when I use this which is wonder tape which is the double-sided water soluble uh, tape that you can use to attach garment and it will disappear when you're watching the fabric afterwards. And what I do is that I place this wonder tape on the inside of the waistband and stick together the inner waistband piece to the seam of the outer waistband and this pretty much keep it in check when I'm top stitching. So what I've done here obviously is that I top stitch with the yellow top stitch thread on the outside and then of course I used a darker thread on the inside but as you can see it looks really nice and even and that is much thanks to using the wonder tape. So, so if you are struggling with getting your waistband to look really nice on the inside when you're making pants, well, then I think you should definitely try the wonder tape and it has several different names and I will link to all the stuff in the description section if you're curious to know more about this and where you can get it. And the second thing that has been really useful for me is to use this. This is a press template. It's basically a piece of stiff paper that I use as a guide when I'm pressing the patch pockets, basically the back pockets. As you can see, there are oh, a lot of sharp curves on jeans pocket and that can be quite tricky to get right. This press template I'm holding in my hand is the size of the finished pocket. So what you do is that you press the fabric around the edges which makes sure that the all the corners will be razor sharp and then you just need to pin the um, patch pocket onto the uh, back of the jeans just using a couple of needles because you have pressed it so much it's really firm and then you're just top stitching it. So I highly recommend that you start using press templates if you're struggling with getting the patch pocket as a sort of razor sharp especially around the corners. And you know what? You can also use a press template for round pockets. It works the same way. So this is definitely... And another struggle is uh, making buttonholes on jeans. And I, I would be lying if I said that I've mastered it, but I've learned a few tips along the way. And the first one that I think is really important to know is that you should definitely increase the stitch length. So don't do that dense, regular buttonhole stitch when you're making jeans, because that's where you will have problem with the, um, the press foot feeding the fabric forward. So you definitely need to experiment with the stitch length. and. A second tip is, of course, to use a thick top stitching thread on the outside and then you use regular thread in the bobbin, which also makes it less risky that it will jumble up. Uh, and that is probably one of the things that uh, is most tricky when you're doing using a regular domestic sewing machine is actually to get nice looking buttonholes on thicker fabric. A third point is to keep in mind that you will obviously have a bit of a seam allowance here, right? And that is also a risk that if you start stitching the buttonholes on the seam allowance as well, you will have a lot more bulk there. So I would definitely recommend that you trim down the seam allowance a lot and then you stitch the buttonholes just outside of the seam allowance. So the entire buttonhole will be stitched on the same thickness of fabric. So that's definitely another tip you can try. And speaking of sewing over bulky lace, I find that a hump jumper can look in many different ways. This is the one that I have where you lift up the presser foot to make the surface even when you're stitching over bulky lace. Say for instance when you are hemming the, the jeans because then you obviously stitch over a lot of thick layers and this is a recipe for skip stitches unless you use the hump jumper. So I will just lift up the presser foot and make that stitching much more even. So definitely try that one. It can you also use when you're attaching belt loops and I think probably a lot of other ways as well but I definitely always use it when I hem jeans because that's one of the problem areas I find because there's so many thick lace. So 
Humpy Humper. Again, I will link to those in the description section. If you don't have one, you can find out more about that. And top stitching, well, that is another thing that can be quite difficult, especially when you consider the fact that when you're making jeans, you're usually using contrasting threads. So every little mistake shows in a rather painful way. And this is definitely something that always gives me a slight anxiety when I'm making jeans to make sure that the top stitching looks good. But I have found several different things that has helped me improve the results. So I'm going to share those with you now. And the first one is pretty basic, I'm sure you already know that, and I've also done a separate video about top stitching, you check out the link in the description section, but is that you use top stitching thread in the needle and you use regular thread in the bobbin. And you can either use matching thread, so for Goodman, which is the brand I recommend, my favorite color is 968 nine, on the Goodman thread. And what color should you choose for the bobbin thread? Well, there's basically two options I would say. You can either use a matching thread, uh, good amount which I really like for the top stitching thread. My favorite color is 968. They also have a matching regular thread. So you can either use that or you can go using a blue thread that matches the fabric. And the advantage obviously of using a blue thread is that any sort of wobbly stitching on the inside will not be very visible. So I really like to use that when I am doing waistband. So for instance, as you can see here on the inside, I've used the navy thread and then the Gutemann top stitching thread on the outside. But you can also, of course, use the golden thread on the inside as well. So this is, for instance, how the hem looks on the inside where I use the matching thread. So it basically comes down to either taste or how confident you feel in your top stitching. And another important thing when you're doing top stitching is that you really need to consider your presser foot choice. Uh, I personally like to use a presser foot with an edge guide. I think most sewing machines have this or if it doesn't is included with the purchase you can definitely get one separately. They do cost a bit but if there's one presser foot I recommend you get is, is to get one of those with the edge, edge blade. And the advantage is obviously that the edge blade acts as a guide so that top stitching along the line here is much easier compared to that if you just had to sort of freestyle it. But if you want to freestyle it, uh, there's actually some sewing machines, including mine, also comes with a dedicated denim presser foot. And what this apparently does is that it does better work stitching over thick lace. So I did some experimenting with this one uh, on my latest pair now, and I found it really good, but I wouldn't say it's much better than this one. So it all depends on on how your fabric behaves. And that said, I should say that the denim fabrics that I use for my two pair of jeans here isn't that thick compared to some denim fabric. So perhaps this special denim foot is better when you're doing really, really heavy duty denim compared to this one, the edge presser foot. And the third component when it comes to top stitching is picking the right needles. And the third component when it comes to top stitching is picking the right needles. And I, some, I, and the third component to a successful top stitching is using the right needles. Now, I actually use two types of needles when I'm sewing denim. First, I use the jeans version by high quality denim needles for sure. Schmidt is a great brand. I know Organ has uh, similar needles and I'm sure a lot of other brands too. And this is size 100 or um, 16 for the denim. And I also am very fond of the top stitching needle and I find that when you're really stitching over thick layers, the top stitching needle probably does a little bit of a better job than the regular denim needle. So I use that one as well. And another advantage of the top stitching needle is that it's constructed to cut through thick layers and it also has a bigger eye um, when it comes to the needle. So it really has a lot of room for the thick top stitching thread. I will link to both these needles in the description section. You can check out that. But definitely invest in good quality needles regardless of brand because the needles is super super important when you're stitching with all those thick lays to make sure that you don't get skip stitches or jumble up bobbin thread you really need to have this heavy duty good quality denim and top stitching needles and my last tips is a bit of a bonus tips and that is that did you know that you can use your cover stitch machine as well for making jeans there are usually three very common practices when it comes to that in the red to wear industry. First one is that pretty much all belt loops are done with a cover stitch machine. As you know, cover stitch machines 
stitches two rows like this and has a looper thread on the inside and the best of some having on the jeans that I made they are both done on the cover stitch machine and it provides really beautiful stitching now a good thing to know about that is that you should use regular thread and not top stitching thread if you're using a domestic cover stitch machine because most are not really configurated for uh, those heavy threads so it can mess up the the tension if you're using a thick thread so you can of course experiment but i find that i need to use a regular thread luckily as i said Gudeman does uh, has the same colorway so you can't really tell that those stitches are done with a slightly thinner thread than those one because the colorways is exactly the same and it's actually very common to use cover stitching when hemming jeans and what you do is to use this chain stitch a single row chain stitch to hem jeans and i'll describe this method in my upcoming book about cover stitching so you can learn more about that but in short what that chain stitch does compared to a regular straight stitch like this one is that it provides the sort of very wavy hem that is so sort of a trademark when it comes to denim jeans so that is sort of automatically created when you're doing the chain stitch plus another good thing about using the chain stitch is that it has some built-in stretch so it's also an excellent choice when you're working with really stretchy fabric with one disadvantage i think when stitching stretchy denim fabric with a regular sewing machine is that stitch sort of pulls together and can become a little bit wavy and, and worn out so if you have a cover stitch machine i definitely recommend that you start experimenting with a chain stitch when hemming the jeans so these were my top tips for making jeans now i would love to hear all your tips obviously this is becoming more and more popular to make our own jeans and it can be a bit of a struggle so i'm really curious of what things you found out really works for you and helps improve the results so please share in the comment section and of course if you want to know more about jeans making i've done lots of blog posts over at my blog at laststitch.com so you can learn more about denim making and how I make my jeans. All those links will be in the description section. And if you haven't already, please hit subscribe for weekly sewing videos. And also hit that notification button if you want to make sure that you get notified when I publish a new video. Stitch safe and I'll see you next time. Bye bye.